Good morning. Good morning, Kerwin. How are you? No, where are you? Retiring the stock market, part two, session one, uh, February 18th, 2024. Um, we're here talking about Kerwin, talking about trading. Uh, one question you had was um, about patience and about um, we're talking about trading at the right time. There's a saying that if you have patience, you can rule the world. So in trading, uh, we also need to apply patience. And uh, one thing I was showing Kerwin is um, we're talking about Tesla. And here it's showing um, a monthly chart. Can you see that? Yes. Kerwin? And I have here basically like I can touch my screen. You can show me what happened what happened for that day. I wanna show you that. It goes like this this day it moved six points. High one eighty six, low one eighty two. One ninety one, one eighty three. And there's a there's a trend here. If you look. We have support around uh, 180, let's say 185, and resistance around uh, 195 in, in just for this month. And I have a low of 175. See that? Yes. And if you look on the left, all the way to the left, I have a 210. There's a 210 that it dropped, and now it's going to, it looks like it's going to go back up. Okay. So, um, what I would do here is put a limit order. Um, you don't want to you don't want to be greedy and try to get the whole move, but you want to get some of this move. So you can probably just down your drill. You have any drill already? Yes. Limit order. Tesla. And here I'm just gonna put um 180. I'm gonna say 185. Limit order at 185. Now you can just do a couple shares to, to start off with, but when when you start getting good at it, you increase your shares, right? You right. put more money down, you start getting being successful, right? Start slow, right? Right. right. And if you if you're doing, let's say, let's say you're doing, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say three shares, um, you have you have some available cash in, in your account to trade. Right. Let's say you do three shares, so that's uh let's say just under six hundred dollars. And you get one eighty five, let's say you get limit order. And you put a order then once you get in, you get it put an order to sell limit. Let's say at one ninety five. Okay. That's ten points. Ten points on three shares is thirty dollars, okay? Right. It's not a lot of money, but it's it's a token. It's uh, the beginning of something. That could be great if you get good at it, and right. um, and um, a lot of these stocks do have a a trend, and what we call when it swings up, we call that resistance, and it comes back down because why? Because there's a lot of traders in the in the stock they're selling, right? right. They see that resistance, they start selling. They want they want to take the profit. They don't think I can go much higher, and then when it when it bottoms, and by the way, we always want a stock that has good volume. Because good right. volume means there's a lot of traders in there, a lot of investors that are, are in the stock, they're watching the stock. And when the stock dips, they may be like, hey, Tesla dipped, buy more or buy buy signal, you know? And that's the support. Mm -hmm. Then when they start buying it, what happens? It starts going up. So uh, put a limit order, um, uh, identifying the trends. And let's say we can get <clears throat> 10 points on Tesla. That's, you know, in this case, three shares. That's thirty dollars per trade. That's just a token. Of course, you can do the same thing with a call option. You understand how to do call options? Oh yeah. When you do a call option, call option, you want to go out three months. Let's say three to six months. And the reason that is because we don't want to get near expiration, and then the, <clears throat> and then the stock drops on us, and option expires worthless. Right. See that? So you right. want to put plenty of time to trade on the call option. Some people trade leaps, which is one year, right? Right. Uh, so 
um, call options for shares. Okay, so shares last indefinitely. They just last. They're just going to be there as long as the company's there, right? Right. So that, in a way, the shares are the, are the most valuable asset in that way, because, like, I don't know if you heard, but Coca Cola just broke a hundred years on the stock market. Is that right? I didn't hear that. Yeah, one hundred years. Yeah. Can you see me right now? Yes. Okay. Good. Um, can you so, see me? Uh, no, but um, it's because I'm sharing my screen. I can see my screen. Oh, okay. Uh, so um, less viable than the shares, but still viable is the call options. Now, if uh, if you look at the leaps, the call options go by at about three years. So um, the three year call option is a, is is a, is a good is in, in a way the best option because it has three years of life. And after that, it expires. You got to right. do something. You got to either uh, sell, or you can. Um, you can take the shares. You can you can uh, assign those shares. But we always just always just um, sell buy and sell options. I don't um, do the assignment of the shares. You know, right. uh, I just use it as a vehicle to trade. Um, and, and and most um, and most options actually expire. You know, uh, worthless. Something about that. You know, so um, you're using options as a tool as a method to trade. Uh, right. Options basically are leverage. Write this down. Options are leverage. Right. Options are a vehicle to leverage the stock. Options are a vehicle to leverage the stock. So, um, let's say one year options are less viable, nine months, six months, less viable, three months, less viable, and like one month, less viable. And like the least viable option is one that expires next week because that one, it only has one week of life. Right. It's like do or die. You know, I generally don't um, ever, ever advise to buy options for next week. Um, if I'm going to sell, if I'm going to sell options like cover calls, I just don't cover calls. Uh, I put three to seven weeks. Three to seven weeks trade. Cover calls. I did that. And then if I'm buying options, cover calls are three to seven weeks trade. If I'm buying options, I'm going to go three months, six months, Plus, and then put leaps. Leaps. So buy the options, I go out longer. Three months, six months, and leaps, which is one year plus. That way you have time to trade. Um, when you're selling calls, like cover calls, or if you're doing spreads, um, you generally want those to expire because you get the money up front, and then you can let the option decay in that way. Mm -hmm. But when right. you buy the option, you want to have value in that option. Right. And um, you want that to be to last longer. You have time to trade it. You have time for the stock to go up. Right. That's why I say never buy an option for next week. Don't don't play earnings because if you play earnings and it, it goes the wrong way, your the whole position could get wiped out. Right. But if you if you are playing earnings, have it so it's three months, six months, so you can have two earnings. That way you have two two chances, right? Right. So it's not going to just get wiped out like next week or next month. Does that make sense? Right. So let me ask you this: What if you you get you get in a, into say a leap, and yeah, then then during the earnings that that contract goes. I mean that option goes the the opposite way of your what you bought the leap for. Do you do you just hold it or do you get out of it? That gets my next point. Let me finish up on Tesla and I'll answer your question. Okay. So okay. um you're 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 buying so buy uh limit order write this down order to buy support and then limit order to sell resistance 
And ideally, it's it's a little bit less. Like if you see the support at one ninety five, you can put the order at one ninety three. You see, because you want right. to be green. Because if, right. if if I'm going to sell, if I sell at one ninety three, and you sell one ninety five, whose limit orders are going to get taken out first? Yeah. Because because my my order is is, is easier. It's easier to achieve. So don't get greedy, right? Right. But when you see when you see you can make a profit, and and you know what, just make a little bit of profit. You don't have to like. Even make ten points. You can make some people make five points, right? Right. So the point is, is like you want to make register, make doable trades, doable, like not like crazy lofty, trying to get million dollar trades. You know, small easy trades, right? Small right. easy. That's what I'm looking. At. Okay, now, but now, um. Any questions on that? No. So if you you know if you're in Tesla and you're getting you know just say three shares, and you're getting thirty dollars a trade, you know do you know do one two, you know, three trades is ninety dollars, right? Now, um, before I go on, let's talk about something. Um, you have that's your your win goal here. Your goal here is ten points, right? In, the, in this Tesla example. But you also want to have a goal to get out, right? Right. Right. If if it doesn't, if it's not working, right? If, if the stock goes down, for example, you can also right. get out, right? Um, right. If if your let's say your let's say uh, your um, goal is a twenty percent return, okay. Um, twenty percent win. Right, just said twenty percent win. Put put. Also, you can put like uh ten to fifteen percent loss. Okay, meaning if stock goes the wrong way, and you want to cut your losses, you can put a loss like below the price, like ten to fifteen percent. For example, I like to have my win goals. Higher than my loss goals, okay, right. And I say that because um, mathematically, at least in my mind, if I do a winning trade and I get twenty percent, and I do a losing trade and get ten or fifteen percent loss, then I still have a gain, okay. Right. So in that way, I like to have my loss less than my win goal. But you can do you can do like even fifty fifty. The, the math doesn't isn't that important. It's just about what you want to do. So I also right. have an extra strategy. <clears throat> Write this down. Extra strategy. Whether win or lose. Success or failure. And that way you can kind of gauge yourself on if your trades are working. Um, the, the advantage of having an extra goal at a, at a loss is so you can, you know, you don't get hurt too much, right? There's two reasons why the sell sell at a loss, right? One right. is to stop the bleeding. You stop stop the risk. You control the loss. Okay. Right. The other reason to, to to sell at a loss is so you can save your money for the next trade. Okay. Right. You don't want to get wiped out. You know, I have people see people in seminars, oh, you know, you know, God Rick, I got the stock at hundred now it's ten dollars. What do I do? Well shit. You lost ninety percent. You see, oh, yeah. so you could have had the loss at like ten or twenty percent. That makes more sense, you know. Right. Uh, so and, and then so my thinking is this: Look, I got into a position. It went the wrong way. I have my loss at ten percent or fifteen percent. You look at the stock and see where it goes, right? Right. And you put the loss below that, like like here. If if if, if the if the bottom here is one seventy five, I might put the loss. I might put put a put a. A mental stop, mental, at one seventy, right? Because I don't want to. If, if it goes off off the off the rails, I want to accept my losses, and and then it, and then I can sell the shares, and I can get my money out, and I can reevaluate. See, right. So you generally set a, a stop loss, a mental stop loss, um, uh, below below the 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 trend of the stock, right? So. 
if it's going between 180 to 190 and the low is 175 here, you can put like to stop at 170. Uh, the 170 that way, you know that if it went off the rails, the position failed and you're going to cut your losses and start fresh. Right. So does that make sense? Yes. Now, and in the same sense, the wind goal, let's say the wind goal is, let's say, 195. We already talked about that. And then when it's 195, you can just get out. You can either do a limit order or you can do a mental order, but a limit order is good if you're working, if you're not always watching the market. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. So on your leap, um, that's a year long. What I do... I, I still set my win goal. Like if, if it's a if it's a three month option, I might say you know let's say I might say you know twenty percent, or if it's a stock, maybe it's ten percent. Right, twenty percent on option. Actually, let me do this. Let me do this. Um, let me do this. Fifty uh, percent on option. Okay, right. and let's say ten to twenty percent on stock and put long term so this is like um six months to one year okay 50 percent return on the option and 10 to 20 percent return on the stock for six months and then here short term You can put 25% on the option and let's say 10% on stock. You can put 5%, 5 to 10% is fine on stock. Short term is like three months. So like three months, short term, option, 25% gain, stock, 5 to 10% gain. That's the parameters. You follow? Okay. Yes. And then long term, six months plus to one year plus, 50% return on the option and 10 to 20% return on the stock. This is just general, this is just general parameters. You have right. to look at the stock and you have to tweak it. Maybe uh, this stock is, is, is not so volatile. It's not going to move that much. So you have to lower your exit strategy, right? Right. And if you're going to win 50% on the option, maybe your loss should be uh, 30%, right? Right. It can also be 50%. But I like to have it, like I said, I like to have it less than my win goal. And on the stock, if you want to win 10%, your loss can be like 7%, you know? If you have a, if you have a stock that's, that's, let's say it's 100, right? Um, 7% is about 93, right? So right. honestly, like that's not the probably go to 93 so i'm gonna put like like 89 you know in that case it's 11 percent, right right and i'm doing that because i think in this case i think maybe the stock will go to at the lowest i think it'll probably go to like 90 right from your stock yeah. at 100 and i'm gonna put like the loss just stop loss at 88 or 89 because if it goes that low i figure you know um I, I, the position failed and went the wrong way you see Right. The reason I got into the stock is because I got a hundred dollars to go to 110, 112, 115. You see? But it went the opposite way, right? right. So you have an extra strategy for both a win and a loss. Right. All right. And let me tell you another reason why you have to sell at a loss. Um because like if, if you're managing money, for example, look at these money managers who do it for a living, who who are professionals. They either they're independent traders. That rely on their accounts to survive, or the money managers that manage a million, hundred million dollars, right? Right. They can't. They, they don't have the luxury to sustain a big loss, right? Right. Um. So they have to sell. They have to cut their losses, because well, if they if if they're in the hundred dollar stock and the stock went to ninety, well, you know, that's a ten percent loss. Well, you know, you can survive that, you know. But if it goes right. to eighty, seventy, sixty, you see, if the stock market crash, you can't. You can't. Those guys all have puts. They have hedges. They they're selling. They that they have um, spreads. They they have protection, right? Right. So like the the, man, the their managers be like, listen, you better cut your losses or you're gonna be fired. That's all. They get fired right. if they lose too much money. 
So that's right. a luxury to have like a 90% loss. Like some of these people that don't really do stocks that much. Right. Some of us complain about they have a big loss in the stock. So you manage a lot of money, you have to um, cut your losses much sooner because you have to prepare for that next trade. Right. So think about it like that. Think about it like you're a professional, you know. You can't, you can't, write this down, you can't sustain a big loss. Right. You can't sustain a big loss. You really can't. You don't have, you don't have that luxury. Not as a, a real trader. So you have to put your parameters. Um, now, whether you have whether you have the like parameters of a ten percent, twenty percent, twenty even twenty five percent, but that's not really important. The important thing is that you want to. It stops you from having to like. I'll tell you a story. I, I was I was um, trading with some Asian ladies, and we got into uh, checkpoint software back back in the nineties. I'm gonna say, and uh, right. it was it was in play. It was going up. We were all excited. Um, the, the chart was going straight up, and it was it was hot. It was in play, so we got in around um, eighty or ninety dollars, and it went and it went and it went back to two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And I sold. I told them, "Hey, I sold." They didn't understand why I sold. I said, "Hey, I got a profit. I, I reached my goal." Right. And they thought they could just keep it, and it would just keep going up. What happened was it started coming down. You know, like I suspected. And um, I told them to sell. I said, sell, take a profit. I told them. But they didn't want to do that. They were in longer term, fine. But that stock ended up going back to 100 and then went back back to $30. Really? Now they have a 70-point loss when they had a 100-and-something point gain. And they said, right. what do I do? And I said, listen, what do you mean, what do you do? I told you to sell it when we had a $100 gain. What do you want me to do? You right. Take so they took, so... The, the point of, of the protection is that it stops you from having a great loss. That's the only right. point of it. So whether you do 10%, 20%, 25%, it just has to do with you have to have it somewhere. You can't just have no protection, you see? Right. Um, not this session, but other, uh, next session, if you want to, we can talk about like um, puts, uh, hedges, and also um, uh, spreads. Okay. Spreads is where you have you own one option. Let's say you own the one hundred strike, and then you sell the one ten or one twenty. That's a spread, and right. that brings back income. You have the option, which is nice. It's your long, and then then you sell the one ten, one twenty. You you bring it back income into the account. It's a hedge. It's a protection, right? But you still have play. You still have play in that hundred option. It can still go up. That's a spread. So. Uh, you know, these money managers, these big investors have to do all these uh, uh, fancy trades. Mostly it's just a hedge because they can't afford to take a big loss. That's why. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, questions on that? No, I will take up so much on the Okay. So back on your, on your uh, one year trade, one year um, leap trade, let's say we buy um, a Tesla call or the, what, what stocks you like? You like Tesla? What do you like? Uh, I like Tesla. Uh, Palantir, really like Palantir Maybe right now. Palantir, Palantir is good. Tesla's good. What else? Give me one more. Uh, Costco. I really like Costco, Costco as a start. A little expensive right now, but I like Costco. Yeah, I think Costco go to eight hundred, right? Costco eight hundred. Yeah. You heard it first here. I got you. Uh, Tesla, I think Tesla will go back to three hundred. Write that down. And then Palantir, I think it'll probably go. I don't know what it probably go to thirty. Palantir is a real roller coaster. So when it, right. when it goes up, it's those sellers are going to hit that resistance, trying to take their profits and come back down, right? Right, right. But if you, if you did a one-year leap option on any of these, I would say, like, Costco, I would look for, like, a 20% gain on the option. Pounds here, let me be, like, a th- uh, 25 to 30% because it can move more in Tesla. Because that's just so down, they're so beaten to hell. Right, they are. We 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 can honestly we can go for like a thirty to fifty percent gain on the option. Tesla thirty to fifty, pound tier twenty five to thirty, and Costco twenty. I'm just doing it from my knowledge of the stock and how they move. Right. And when you hit that, when you hit that um gain, 
you have a couple options. You can just sell, take the profit, which is your plan in the first place. Right. Or maybe you can sell part of it. Like if you have two calls, you can sell one, you see. But you need to you need to take profit. Like again, um, did we talk about Mr. Morgan in our first session? In our Mr. first Morgan. Basically, mm -hmm. he's he's the boss. He's the boss. He wants your portfolio on his desk Monday morning and a better show of profit. Basically, Mr. Morgan's a guy, he's like a like a mythical figure that he's he's the responsibility. He's your boss. And if you're training, you gotta think, you gotta show, you gotta make money. That's what you right. that's what you need to do. That's right. the bottom line. Okay. And the thing about um uh, uh, like a figure like Mr. Morgan, you always have somebody looking over your shoulder. You can't mess up. You can't cheat. You can't be silly. You can't. You can't be irresponsible. And right. if you do, you're gonna get fired, right? Because you're managing his money. That's the point. So if you have your, you know, thirty percent gain in Tesla option, you need to pull the trigger so you can sh show your uh, accounts making money. You see, right now. If you have a deep option, you can always go back in. You can say, look, I, I, I got up a 30 cent profit. I'm going to wait until it dips again. And then you get in. You see, you put the limit order like we talked about. Look at the trend. Look at the resistance and support. Right. And right. you be patient. You know, if, if, if it's moving 10 points in a month, then you got you to wait a month. You know, if it's moving 10 points in a week, then you got to wait a week. If it takes three months, then you got to wait three months. So uh, what you do, I just don't follow the trend. Follow the trend established. And then put um, six month chart. The six month chart is, is the most important chart, I think. The okay. six month chart really is going to show um, the short term trend and the long term trend, at least for Trading. Right. So always consult the six month chart. That's my, that's my always, uh, you know, if you look at the weekly chart, six month chart, totally different. You know? Right. Questions. So, question on that. So, say you, you enter in, into a leap, a leap on Tesla. And say the first month it hits you. Your profit target of thirty percent, and just say you got say ten contracts, you closing all ten and cut and cutting the trade, or say cut, close eight of them and hold two. And uh, what what thing you can do? You can close five and hold five. Okay. And, and look at the okay. trend. Let's say you close half, but you look at the trend. If you think that you know it's going to keep going up. I don't want you to to just you know close everything out, but right. at the same time, it's a, you got to be you got to be wise, right? You, you know you right. know about this term. You, 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 you know you read the Bible. Yes, there's a word called discernment, right? And it's a gift, really, you know, from the Holy Spirit, from God, and we have to discern. Like here's here's two stocks, you know, which one's better? Here's two trades, which one is better? You know. We have to use our discernment to um, see uh, what's the better what's the better action we need to take. All right. And um, you know, the more experience you have, the more wise you get with these trades. Uh, like for me, I rather um, follow my plan. Like if I have a goal to make thirty percent. I want to follow my plan first, you know, and then I can always reevaluate. Like right. if I want to get thirty percent on Tesla, I, I might sell everything. I might just sell everything because why? Well, I think maybe it'll it'll sell, it'll come back down because it has been right. hit the resistance. It broke it broke. Let's say it broke through the resistance, right? Now it's in right. new 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 levels, right? Well, right. you know, I might just sell everything because I I like to get that money. I take that profit, you know. At the same time, uh, if I think um it'll keep going up. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll sell half. We'll see. So you have right. to use discernment. That's what I can say. Use discernment, pray, you know, meditate, pray, whatever you need to do. Um, but you do need to show 
write this out. You do need to show profits. You do need to show profits. Okay, you do need to. Okay, and then also, you do need to cut losses at some point. Don't just say, you know, you know about the average down rule. You know what that means? Right. Average down, what does that mean? Uh, as, as the stock pulls back, you can kind of buy it at a cheaper price. Right, and then if 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 the price is a hundred, and you get it a hundred, and then it goes down to ninety, right? You buy more, that's average down, and then your average price is ninety five. Right. If you buy if it goes down to eighty, and you buy more, the average price is about eighty seven or whatever. That's average right. down. Um, I don't like to average down because it just kind of shows like a failing trade. What I do, I have one rule: I double down just once. I, I can when it swings below I think think I can I can double down I can buy this once as a rule you know right. or you or you just get out you know but let's say you you got to can maybe recover you 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 can you can average down just once so write this down don't average down more than once don't okay. average down more than once that's just one you have one more shot don't be giving yourself more chances this stock keeps going down and down. There's a story where a guy uh, on a golf course and he's had a stock at, let's say, 100 and then it went down to like, say, 70. And then he's meeting with his friends, hey, the stock's down to 70. And he's like, yeah, I bought more at 70. And then it goes down to 50. I bought more at 50. And it keep, right. the story keeps going on. And, and eventually it goes down to like 10 and he and he, and he he drops dead. <laughs> the, the golfer yeah. drops dead just from stress. So, like, right. you have to cut your losses at some point. You can't keep averaging down, okay? Right. Because you're okay. a real trader. You're not. You don't have. You're you're a real trader. You can show results. That's why. Right. That's what I was planning on doing with the uh, Roku. If it pulls back more than it did on a uh, Friday, probably. I, I only bought two contracts. I, I, I want to possibly get to five of them. But I bought that. Uh, bought that out to April to the month April monthly. There you go. Well, April, April's only two months, but yeah, I mean, um, I, I think Roku is good at this price. If it dips more, you know, you can just use your better discernment. But uh, right. I think it's over. I think it is oversold. You know, I, I sometimes I think the news uh, scares people, right? And then they, they oversell the stock, and then what goes back up? Just look at the look at the six month chart for Roku. Look at the yearly chart. Look at the five year. You know, it looks like it's climbing back up. Right. So yeah, I like Roku. Right. So let me ask you this on on Roku fences. Now I've seen uh it is his last pivot. Can you still, can you still on, see me? Yes. I've seen his last pivot on on the daily chart was uh around a hundred bucks. So I was thinking about targeting that area as far as getting out. What do you think about that? Or should I just say target maybe a half of that area, half of that gap now? I put one year on the Roku here. You see that the last the last. Can you uh, see this? Yes. Yeah, that so last like, pivot this, this right there. Chart, this one year chart looks okay. It goes down to fifty, goes up to mm -hmm. ninety, goes down to right. sixty, goes up to one hundred eight, goes down to eighty, goes up to one hundred, and then it goes to seventy. But it's it's kind of okay, you know. Yeah. So oh, yeah. it's like a five point. So what what's your question? So what I was thinking is. Targeting that hundred as far as the target on his, on those option contracts, or should I be more conservative and go say around ninety? So, what, what's your thoughts on that? Um, if if you're by April, um, you can go a hundred or ninety. It's it's kind of it's kind of like it's, uh, I'm going to sell these options anyways when they go up. So, right, it doesn't need to be in the money for me. Um, okay. but obviously, the closer to just know that the closer to the share price, the strike price being closer to the um the, the stock price, the share price is um more expensive but more but less risk, right? Right. And if you go if you go higher than the share, if you go higher, if you buy the strikes higher than the share price and higher, there's there's uh more risk, but there's more also more leverage, more reward. 
Right. So you have to make that. I, would, I mean, uh, hundreds, you can even buy, you know, 110s. Well, for April, I, 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 bought, I, you know, I bought May. I, I have May right now. Because, why? because May. May, May is including the next earnings re- result report. Right. I like right. to do that. But you know what? I'm going to end up selling anyways, you know, at least a month before. So I, right. I don't like to go, I don't like to go um, through expiration. Right. Also, like, yeah. um, if if the stock um, doesn't doesn't act right, the 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 farther out options don't get affected that much, but the closer options get affected get get slammed. You know, like yeah, if, you the, the at, time if, the, uh, if you look at the like, let's say go leave, let's say go out to one year, right? Right. They, they, those those options don't really get hurt too much when the stock dips, but if right. the ones that are out one month, two months closer in, those ones get slammed. You know, right. So it just depends on. Um, what your long term strategy is. I gotcha. would say hundreds are fine, nineties are fine, and even one tens are fine on the Roku. Uh, I, I would I would go I would switch to May or longer just because um the downside it's it's, it's not affected so much if the stock comes down. Okay. I got you. Uh, but I'm not telling you to change your position. I'm just telling you what I would do. Right, right. I got you. And then if and then you can easily get let's say Thirty to fifty percent return on on Roku options, definitely, because right. because they're uh, volatile. And um, if I if I if I buy an option for let's say five points, you know thirty percent, you know six six. Uh, what's thirty percent on five points? Uh, six uh, six fifty. Right. Seven fifty. Well, seven fifty is. Fifty percent, seven fifty. You know, um, <clears throat> take small gains and walk away. You know, you do that. Right, I got you. Are you um, writing down all your trades? Yes. You want to be. You want to be consistent. Write this down. Be consistent in accounting. For all your trades, be consistent in accounting for all your trades. So you can go look back and see you buy at this price, right down your goal was this price, and this is the 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 result of the trade, profit loss. If you're real consistent, you can see a trend. You can see where you're doing well. You can see where your your trades are losing. And what we discussed previous to this conversation is um, you need more patience. You need to wait a little bit longer for that um, trade to come into effect. Right. Wait, wait a little bit longer to re- to receive the fruits for that trade to mature. Right. And um, so just, you know, don't pull the trigger so fast. Wait a little bit. Don't get scared. Don't let the big boy scare you out of the market, you know. Uh, like, you see these options? Yes. Uh, did you say you had April? Yes. Which ones? The April uh, 85. Well, two contract. So they're 266 by 276. Right. Yeah, those ones are going to move. Now look at this. I'm gonna show you this, this if you know this. The delta is two eighty eight. Right. So it's like having twenty eight shares. If you have one of these, if you have one of these contracts, it's like having twenty eight shares of the stock. Right. So you have two contracts. You have fifty seven shares of Roku with those two contracts. Right. And that so but you, you typically that's the same. If the stock goes up one point, you have fifty-seven dollars profit on that option. You know that, right? Right. However, the the delta will change when the share price changes, and it's not right. going to be exact. You know, if the stock's up, you know, one point, and, and you think you're going to get fifty-seven dollars, but then it's really only forty dollars. You can't complain. It's just it's just a ballpark. It's not exact. Right. Questions. So do you typically go with the Delta 70s when you are uh, going into all your options? No. Um, 
No, it all it all depends. It all depends. Gotcha. Can you see me again? Yes. Um you have you have Delta twenty eight. Um Delta seventies would be sixty five. That'd be it the money. Right. Is that right? Right. I definitely don't go into money that much. Okay. Um, but it's more safe, you know. It's like right. ideally, the safest thing is the safest thing is the is the is the shares. And you start right. getting to the options. The safest options are the ones in the money. So if you want to be more safe, less return, go go down to seventies, yeah. But if you think you want to take a, a risk, you want to have a robust return, take a risk. Um, you can go like what you did, Delta 30s, 20, even right. Delta 20s, you know, right? Um, I, 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 ideally, you want to have both. You want to have some, what I do, I have some shares and I have some options, right? It's a balance, right? Just down, balance your positions, balance positions. So it's good to have some shares and then also have some options in that way. So you have your balance, right? If your um, options, options, you know, like my, my options got killed, right? I already had those good down twenty two points, right? Right. Um, but my shares are still there. You see, right? So it's right. like I didn't get wiped out, you know. Like if I was a, if I was a, a money manager and I had all, everything in call options and wealth goes down twenty points, this is going to happen to any eventually. Any stock will right. get hammered, you know. So I, I don't know. want you to be that guy that had all the call options and you got wasted, you know? Right. That's why. You get you gotta have some uh some some uh protection. Right. You never wanna be the guy to get wiped out. Um uh, questions. No, I think I understand that. Let's go for a few more minutes and then we'll um we'll wrap. I want you okay. to uh, rewrite your notes um for this session. I'm gonna send you the recording. I want you to save okay. it on your computer so you always have it. I want you to rewrite your notes so you can have a journal that has the date, uh both our names, and I want you to sign the bottom like it's a like it's a letter with your signature. That way you rewrite the notes you have here. We talked about Tesla. We talked about uh, when you when you do cover calls or sell calls, you go through just seven weeks out. Talk about when you buy options, you go three months, six months, or leaps, right. et cetera, et cetera. Win gold twenty percent, last gold ten percent. Why? Because you don't have the luxury to take big losses. You gotta right. still show some gains. So sell half or all your position. You see, use discernment. You know. Um, we like Tesla pounds here, Costco, well, those are fine. Tesla may be 300 mark, pounds here maybe 30 mark, Costco maybe 800 mark, maybe not. I might be wrong, you know. We're in a bull market, right. but that can change. You know, we can go down, you know. Right. When they go down, you got to start, when, when the market kind of corrects, you got to kind of pull back on your on your long positions. If you have right. 10 contracts, maybe sell, maybe sell four and see what happens. Right. You know, don't just get out everything right away because it may return to go higher. You know, right. start start tightening tightening the belt. You know, when the economy gets bad, those big corporations they tighten their belt. They lay right. off employees. They lay off employees. They raise their prices. Right. Right. Because why? Because they're not going to lose money. They're right. right. They're a big corporation. They're not going to lose. They're going to cut their payroll. You know. Tighten their belt, you know, cut their costs, because they're because they, Coca Cola has been around for a hundred years. That's no that's no accident. No, they not at all. That, they, but a hundred, a thousand companies or ten thousand companies went and and came and law came and gone while while Coca Cola was just sitting there just being steady. Right. Write this down. Write this down. Be learn to be steady. Like a like hundred year Coca Cola, like that. Like a hundred year Coca Cola. Be steady, you know. Be able to take the the weather, you know, the windstorms, the roller coaster. Be able to survive, you know. 
Uh, be smart. Use discernment. Don't go crazy. Don't have huge risks. Don't ever, don't ever take a big loss. You know, right? Um, and 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 why? Because um, what novice what novice traders don't realize is that when they're going to get a big return, hundred percent gain, two hundred percent gain, and that's all fine and dandy, right? But right. you can't afford that kind of loss. You see. Right. You can you can get those big gains, but you can't get a big loss. You can't because right. you can't right. recover from a big loss. Like if you lose, if you lost, you know, uh, you, it had it shows it online where if you lose fifty percent, you need to get a hundred percent return to get it back. Make sense? Right. Right. If you, if you gain fifty percent, no one cares. I mean, great. You get you have a, you have a gain a hundred hundred dollar hundred percent gain fifty percent gain. But if you lose fifty percent, Kerwin. You have to get a hundred percent to get it back, right? So a, a loss could always be greater than the gain. Write this down: a loss can always be greater than a gain, or than an equal gain, than an equal gain. Uh, law of diminishing returns, like if you have a stock at a hundred. And you get a ten percent gain. You have one hundred and ten. Right. You got a ten percent loss. You lose eleven percent. Now you're at ninety nine. Right. So where that where that one percent go? I always I always think about this. You know, if you have a fifty percent gain, and you got to go to a, from one hundred to one hundred fifty, but now you have a fifty percent loss, it goes to seventy five. Where that twenty five percent go? <laughs> So the lot in that way, the losses are always can always be greater than those gains. So you have you got to protect yourself from losses, right? Right. Tighten your belt. I'm gonna be steady like Coca Cola. I'm just saying stuff. I'm sorry if if, if it sounds crazy. Um. Any other questions before we wrap? Uh. I don't think I'm good. No, you gave me a lot to think about. So, um, you, we covered a lot. And one thing I want to get into, um, uh, just a, just the last uh, the last note. When you do one limit order, and you're following these trends, the limit order may not take right. Right. So be patient. But like, um, if you're if you get in a system where you're um having successful trades, then you can start doing more trades. If right now, I want you to focus on one trade at a time. But as you get more successful, you can have two trades, three limit orders going, four limit orders going, you see? Okay. If I'm buying low and selling high, and I have several limit or seven limit orders going, maybe maybe they have one I'll take, but maybe one or two will take, you see? Right. So so the more orders you have working for you, the better, but you have to be able to control them all. You have to be able to uh, manage them all. So start right. focus on maybe one trade, maybe two, but one trade at a time. That way you can really focus, and then when you when when you start having some some results, then you go to two, three, four trades. But don't don't have a a, a lot of trades, and it's just too much to manage. It's too hard, right? You know, focus. Right. Like if I was to give you a million dollars today, and I said I want you to do one trade, but the trade has to make money. Right. If it doesn't make money, I'm gonna take my money back. What would you do? Right. You would put it in in, in the most easy and successful trade you can put it right that's what i want you to do the most easy likely successful trade you're going to make that's what i want you to focus on okay right. don't get difficult don't get fancy don't try to show off don't try to do too much okay okay all right Karen. um it was a pleasure uh I'll send you this recording when the process is later today, probably. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, next next week, same time. Next week, yes. Thank Sounds you, good to me. Have a good day. Uh, you as well. Thank you.